Suspected members of IPOB engaged the police for over three hours at Oshumogu Junction during the supplementary governorship elections in the state. The development made joint security operatives to block the Oshumogu Junction. The suspected Biafran agitators aimed at disrupting the poll in Anambra state. The development caused residents to desert the area. Now, joining us live is Plus TV Africa political correspondent Marianne Ocon. Marianne covered the election on the 6th, and uh, she's here to give us more update on what she saw live in Anambra State and the Ihiala election. Hello, Marianne. Hi, Maureen. Thank you for having me. First of all, it was so good having you on ground in Anambra. Tell us again a recap of what you saw and experience. Well, um well, well, for the most part, um, in um, different parts, other than Ihiala, which is obviously a trouble spot, um, elections seemed to was you know seamless. It was you know quiet. It was calm. The only issue that um, most of the polling units uh, across the state had was the issue with the beavers, uh, which was unable to capture um, you know the voters and also slowed down the process, which made. Um, INEC at the end of the day decided that they were going to continue the election until the last person had voted. But then, of course, the elections did not happen in Ihiala and uh, Urumba North. Uh, but the issue of Urumba North was not necessarily that e elections didn't hold, uh, but there was a, a person who had complained that they were forced to sign uh, the result sheets against their will. But that issue has been dealt with, obviously. And then, of course, we were now left with the Ihiala situation where INEC had decided the elections would hold today. Now, from the feelers that I've gotten from our, um, our stringers there in Ihiala, Elections didn't start early. It was supposed to start at 10. Remember that INEC shifted the change the time from 8.30 to 2.30 p.m. Uh, and moved it to um, 10 a.m., from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. But as, as at 11.30 a.m. this morning, elections had not started and um, there were a few teething problems. But other than that, today the beavers worked exceptionally well. The issues, no issues per, um, were recorded apart from the fact that, you know, we had a few hiccups with the IPOB um, um, uh, gunmen and, of course, soldiers. But um, after a while, people were able to come back and cast their votes. As we speak, votes are being counted. At 9 p.m. later today, there's going to be a um, coalition at the local government coalition centre in Ihiala local government area. Now, um, oftentimes when elections are conducted, you have issues of late arrival of INEC officials. And um, did you see that when you went to Anambra? And I also noticed that the same situation was recorded in Ihiala. What does that say about INEC's uh, level of preparedness for this election? Well, um, I, I'm not in any way trying to hold brief for INEC, but INEC did have a lot of logistic problems to deal with that a lot of people did not get, you know, um, information that they were not privy to. We people like us didn't really know that INEC was having to deal with um, the NURTW, um, you know, and... and INEC actually was facing um, a, a case of somewhat of a sabotage, you know, but INEC had to do whatever it took to make sure that the elections held because the truth is um, it, we all do not know what goes on in the back end, but INEC ha had to deal with a lot of things. Remember that even core members who were trained to be ad hoc staff had some of them were, you know, pulling out and this posed a serious problem for INEC, uh, you know, two days to the election. So INEC had to have a contingency plan um, to make sure that people showed up. Now, now for, for my polling units, which was um, uh, Amobia 1, and it was the polling unit 001 to 003, which was also a, a super rack center and a coalition center for uh, that area. The electoral officers showed up early. The two RAs that were running that area showed up pretty early. The voters themselves showed up pretty early. At 7.30 a.m., 8 a.m., we saw voters already coming in. Uh, some came with their seats, husbands, wives, more women even showed up. Uh, to cast their votes. And uh, it showed me the preparedness of not just INEC, but even the people were eager to, to cast their votes and make sure that their voices were heard. So yes, INEC does have some of these problems once in a while. And let's not forget, um, Ihiala is about two hours, um, if not two hours, 30 minutes from Oka. Uh, it can be, you know, a distance plus the issues of insecurity. All of these things had to be taken into consideration. But I'm not in any way saying that INEC does not have a place in the blame.
Okay. Well, until 9 p.m., we won't be able to know who has won Ihiala. And Ihiala, by the way, has the seventh largest uh, uh, number of people in Anambra, 148,407. And of the votes yeah. counted already, the 20 local government areas, um, Charles Soludo is leading. How, how would you assess the fight and those who contested for this election? Well, uh, as of this morning, the PDP, um, APC and other candidates were super uh, hopeful that uh, Ihiala will be, uh, you know, a game changer, uh, even though um, uh, APGA, uh, the flag that is being flown by Charles Saludo, uh, seemed to be leading. They, they seemed hopeful uh, because of the number of votes that they thought would be coming from uh, Ihiala. But then again, um, we've also noticed that in, case, in the case of Anambra, it's always very difficult to get more than 20 uh, or 25 five percent of voters coming out to cast their vote so if 20 percent of 148 thousand comes out to vote i don't really know if that's going to be a game changer but then it's not my place to say we'll wait till INEC um decides who the winner is later tonight yeah talking about that that percentage of voters turning out in that in one of the interviews um you 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 you, you had on, i think it was on a sunday you interviewed some women and you uh, you had observed that more women came out this time um, did that in any way uh, change the game, you think? Well, um, I think that it was a good thing. It changed the game, not in terms of the numbers, but it, it changed the game or the narrative that women never really come out to vote and women, uh, you know, are never ne never really um, heard, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, the voting and the electoral process. Um, but I was super impressed and I, I did tweet about it. It's on my Twitter handle. I, I did say that I'm so I'm in awe of Anambra women because this is something that every Nigerian woman should borrow a lift from. Well, um, the women came. I saw women who carried their babies on their backs. I saw the women who were physically impaired. They showed up to vote. I saw Reverend Sisters from the, um, you know, uh, the, mon the monastery. They all showed up. Women came out more in their numbers. And for me, I was really super impressed. I saw a young lady. This was her first time who, um, to be casting her vote as uh, a Nigerian. She just turned 20 and she was on the phone after she voted, telling her friends that you're at home grumbling and you should be here vote, you know, casting your votes to make sure that you change the things that you're grumbling about. And for me, uh, it, she just endeared me to the Anambrarians. And I, I, I had to keep saying it, shouting at the top of my voice that every single Nigerian woman should stop you know, playing second fiddle and come out. Let the women's voices be heard. Anambra women seems to be uh, tr blazing the trail in this did regard, and have, I hope that they keep they up this temple. Come 2020. Yeah, did you have female contenders? Well, another thing I also noticed, thank you for bringing that up. I was saying that. It's only the People's Democratic Party that had a female um, um, deputy governor candidate. You know, they didn't have um, any women on their tickets except from the, for the PDP. And I was saying to, to my camera person that I find this really, you know, um, confusing that in the 21st century, in 2021, most political parties are still going for men. And, and I, I said, does this mean that the women in those political parties do not have some some form of power or structure in their local government areas or in the state um so that that's also a question that needs to be asked because most of these men who are deputized or used as deputies uh, on these um, tickets where the, the excuse was that look these people have a structure they have people that can um you know bring they have like a base that they can bring into the party but the women may not necessarily have that and i think that that's also a challenge to women not just in a number but women in the political parties across the country to begin to build a base for themselves well, thank you so much, Marianne. We just have to stop now. Keep our fingers crossed for nine and let's see what happens at that time. Thank you so much, Marianne. Marianne Ocon is uh, Plus TV Africa's Plus Politics host. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.